All right, everybody. Thank you for uh, being here with me uh, at this uh, great event, the 20th anniversary of all what's very great and awesome. Uh, well, my name is Glenn Tenkrate. I'm the author of the Security Knowledge Framework, um, together with my brother, Ricardo Tenkrate. Uh, like I said, unfortunately, he couldn't be here, but uh, yeah, he is in uh, getting a bit better, so it would be fine. I have a guest speaker over here, uh, Volkan. Uh, he will also introduce himself, but you know, in a nutshell, I'm doing practical security more than 15 years now, um, seeing a lot of uh, you know gaps and, and issues. And uh, you know, seven years ago when I started the project, the security knowledge framework together with my brother, um, yeah, we really wanted to to help and improve the world. Then we came in contact with OWASP through uh, Jim Manico. He was a uh, OWASP board member at the time, and yeah, it was such an amazing community, good vibe, same vision, same mission. Then we said, hey, we're going to join this family as well uh, of OWASP and uh, yeah, put the security knowledge framework there as well. And uh, well, now seven years later, we made a lot of cool stuff. Uh, like uh, you mentioned, security by design, training developers. Um, so that's what we're going to show and demo today, actually. Um, so yeah, that is me in a nutshell. Then I would say Volkan. All right. So my name is Volkan, Volkan Dindar, and I am working as a penetration tester at the ING Belgium. Uh, yeah, it's such a great honor to be here with you guys and to participate in such a great OLAPS project. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Um, yeah, and like we mentioned uh, in the beginning, right, it's all about training and, you know, writing secure code by design. And um, we started, you know, back in the day, seven years ago, with a very simple approach using the application security verification standard. So if you didn't visit that, uh, uh, you know, recording yet, I would definitely enroll for that one as well. We also have a couple of other suggestions. It's hard to pick because, yeah, they're all very awesome, right, to, to see and uh, to witness. Um, but, you know, the, the whole concept of SKF, how it started like seven years ago, was really enabling developers yeah, from the start to do proper security by design. And at that time, I was challenged by the company saying, hey, Glenn, you're a security engineer. Uh, we're going to release 20 or 30 times a day. Yeah, how do we tackle security, right? Well, then, of course, you have all the security tooling and automation, and that definitely helps. And, you know, you should have those quality gates in your CI CD pipeline. But still, 20 times a day, that's a lot, right? So here we need awareness, training, education, you know, to even prevent all those type of vulnerabilities getting into the CI CD pipeline. So here, the whole concept and idea of SKF and one knowledge center of security uh, was basically born, right? Um, and again, if we look a bit at the features of SKF, right, uh, we have multiple features that enables and helps developers in doing security by design. So you can store your projects in there um, and using these projects, you can then also get like design patterns. Uh, there's an expert wizard in it as well. So based on the ASVS or your adaptation of the ASVS, you basically get a questionnaire, an expert wizard, where based on the questions, it will select from the 300 requirements from the ASVS, the right set of security requirements for your feature that you're developing, right? Um, also, we have uh, extensive code examples in like different languages like PHP, Java, .NET, uh, Python, um, like the 40, 45 most common uh, yeah, code snippets or features that you would build in an application or need, right? Like session management or file uploading. And here the goal was really not only have like a, a high level overview and explanation using the ASVS or the knowledge base items that we have, uh, but also really go on a detailed level to guide the developer step by step why we are doing certain things in the code, right? Um, another important thing is also we have the checklist feature as well. So in here, you can find back the ASVS and the MASVS. Um, so this is great as a reference uh, uh, material where you can easily in an application, right, in SKF, look it up. Uh, most importantly, also, we have labs. So that means we have like uh, around 70 plus now labs from SKF itself. Uh, but we also have, for example, JuShop integrated into it. So you can also start the JuShop uh, cool hacking uh, activities and labs directly from SKF. 
uh, I man man mentioned already like the knowledge base section. So here we have the, our own created knowledge base items to give more deeper understanding of like requirements or certain IT jargon, uh, you know, that you get that more understanding of certain concepts or vulnerabilities, right? Uh, yeah, user management support um, speaks for itself. Also maybe good to mention, I didn't put it on the slide, uh, but actually we also have a, a chat bot that you can deploy in like uh, Slack, Gitter. It, it supports like 30 different uh, uh, chat uh, um, adapters uh, where you can deploy this chat uh, bot and actually it uses the knowledge base data from SKF, the checklist, uh, all that good stuff. And you can query it using this machine learning chat bot. So that's pretty cool that you can just integrate it into your, you know, chat of like Microsoft, Slack, whatever. And if you have a question, like uh, it, it, it knows a couple of intents, like, hey, explain me this or how to solve this or what does this mean? And again, with machine learning, it's then correlating items to the knowledge base item, to the checklist or even getting code examples. So you can ask it like, hey, I'm building, a, I, I need a PHP input validation. Then boom, the chatbot will give you the code snippet from SKF for input validation. So very nifty. That means you don't have to really jump into the application itself, right? You can just straight away ask the chatbot and uh, you get your feedback. So that's also pretty awesome. Um, yeah, then, you know, how does SKF fit in your secure development lifecycle? Well, normally I would say it all starts, you know, when we're talking about doing proper security by design, it all starts with having the right requirements, right? And for this, you use the ASVS, the MASVS, because those are really awesome OWASP projects, right? That already took care of all the combination of requirements. And the good thing about SKF, you can fine tune those requirements as well, right? It's key important uh, when you want to implement an ASVS or an MASVS that you are able to modify the requirements to the needs and the fit of your organization, how you develop and which type of technology stacks you're using, right? So with SKF, you have that possibility as well. Well, and then of course the design phase where you can yeah, really filter like uh, using the expert system, which type of requirements do you need, right? And then also like, what is the mitigation? So normally in the requirement itself, it gives a good clue and a good understanding already, like how to then tackle this requirement. But what we did in SKF, we added knowledge base items to all the requirements. Again, to do that deep dive and explain even on other, you know, different uh, uh, approaches what you as a developer should do. Um, then, of course, you go uh, have all these requirements. You did your design. Um, you have the security requirements from SKF. Well, now is the part for the coding, right? And here again, uh, we have coding snippets to even guide the developer in some of the requirements and how, how to implement them. And what we also did is for a lot of the, the requirements, we added also the testing phases. So which type of requirements could you maybe automate using other OWASP testing uh, tools, right? So take, for example, OWASP ZAP. Some of the requirements you can really test well with the other OWASP project, ZAP, to do dynamic testing of those requirements, right? For other tools, uh, for other requirements, maybe we want to use the OWASP dependency uh, checker, right? To check for known vulnerabilities in components and libraries and all that good stuff. So here we also try to see and really guide again, also on the testing point of view, like, hey, yes, this requirement is coming back all the time, but if you would use this tool, you can automate it and then you don't have to worry about this one. Well, and also, like it says, you know, from that, from that whole flow, we go into the metrics, right? You get all this information back, these requirements, you can follow them up, you can mark them. There's a whole audit flow as well in SKF. Uh, then when you did everything and you get like results back, you know, from a pen test or stuff like that, you could also act on it and say, hey, we see a lot of these type of vulnerabilities coming back. Let's use the lab section in SKF to train the developers, right? in those specific vulnerabilities that always pop up and give them the opportunity to really understand and train and, and play with this type of vulnerability in a safe you know, environment where it is allowed. Um, yeah, and again, uh, culture building and binding. 
you know, if you use SKF and you use it as a training, as your security requirements, you create maybe a security maturity program around it with security champions, you really, you know, are getting that security DNA into the company, right? Um, so the whole package, we really wanted to, to think, okay, how can we help organizations, but developers, yeah, and give them all the right tools and information and awareness to do security proper by design, okay? So that was really our goal over here. Um, yeah, and just to mention, uh, you know, we have many projects at OWASP, uh, you know, all of them we love, right? Uh, but a couple uh, we integrated and are using also in the security knowledge framework. So like I said, the OWASP cheat sheet project, with a lot of knowledge base items that we created, we are also referencing and making a link uh, to the cheat sheet project that is out there. Very awesome project, also gives you tons of information and guidance on certain topics and areas, right? Like OAuth or JWT or just input validation. Great project. And we also have it integrated sort of in the security knowledge framework. I already mentioned it, the ASVS, amazing project, the application security verification standard for all your security requirements. And another great OWASP project that we integrated is the Juice Shop. So this is again, a very, extensive uh, application where you can really learn and and you know again in a safe environment practice your your security skills in like finding them you know uh, there are even also secure coding fixes that you can do in the juice shop so again all these projects uh, we're using them and we love them and we have integrated them into the security knowledge framework um, well, now uh, it's uh, up to yes. you. Uh, now account. my turn. Yes. yes. Uh, well, before I start to talk about the mobile SKF stuff, but we, I, I would like to mention those projects. They are such a great project for mobile security, and they will have a couple of sessions also here for today. And I really recommend their session for if you are a security, mobile security guy, or if you are interested in mobile security. Uh, in a nutshell, MSVS is a kind of like giving overview about uh, security items and you will know where to start, how to start. And MSTG is a little more practical way to hack. It shows like both theoretical and practical way with source code examples and how to exploit it in real world examples. So it's like a more comprehensive if you compare it with the MSVS. But we took those projects together to build something related with mobile SKF. Because like as Glenn mentioned, like uh, SKF has a lot of features to develop, to create a better development environment. And it gives ideas about uh, how to hack them, how to defend them in a both way. So what, what we have done, uh, we took those great projects to into consideration and we implemented it with uh, mobile SKF. It's a new section for SKF and it will cover mobile related security stuff and examples. So they are great projects and we decided to implement it in our, the, as I mentioned, like the project and we did some customizations, we added some extra contents and we also create a new question set, which is like maybe a little bit unique to SKF because uh, when you look at uh, those documents, like there are maybe like a hundred, around a hundred items you need to handle with them. But with those questions that you just like, to, you will know what to focus on. And the question like uh, after answer your questions and it will give you idea which section you should focus on. And maybe many issues will be like, let's say filter out and you will spend time on the issues you need to. So that's why it's a very really good approach and as I mentioned, like it has some lot of content to also give ideas to developers and also the attackers how to test, how to check, and maybe like still not right now, but in the future we will also thinking to implement some like code examples in a practical way to uh, to educate more people. Yes. So thank you very much. I'm very happy with the work Volcom has put in. Uh, I mean, it was a lot of work. It's a uh, an amazing contribution. So thank you very much. Oh, it's my pleasure. Um, and yeah, that, that is also a bit, you know, what I wanted to demo uh, very quickly in SKF that, yes, we have a lot of content now in it, right? We have the ASVS, we have the knowledge base items for ASVS, we have mobile. So the MASVS now with all the knowledge base items, you can both use the ASVS and the MASVS now 
in the expert wizard for when you're managing your project and you want security requirements before you start programming, right? So you are aware of what the features are from a security requirement point of view. Um, but the good thing is about SKF is it is built in such a way that you can just do it, you know, and add your own checklist as well. So that is the, the, the awesomeness of SKF. Um, so here we have the demo environment. Uh, this is, by the way, running on my Raspberry Pi Kubernetes cluster at home. Um, so it could be that it uh, is maybe a bit slow sometimes, but uh, then you know why, because it's okay. running on a couple of Raspberry Pis. Uh, but nevertheless, so here we have the latest version of SKF, the landing page. If white is too, uh, too painful for the eyes, you have the dark mode. And as you can see, we have a lot of references to ASVS, MSVS, cheat sheets, and also another uh, awesome thing to check out is the Open SSF uh, TEDx course. Um, so all the things I just mentioned, you know, about the code examples, the checklist, they're all in here uh, for you to see. So here we have the web application, basically the ASVS. Here we can click them, and here you have all the requirements, the security requirements from the ASVS. And as you see, there are quite many. Um, so this is really, I would say, a nice reference where you can see and also read more where we have the description of that requirement and also what the mitigation would be, right? When you are developing, like what are the steps or to give you more guidance on implementing a requirement like this. So we have the checklist. And like I said, the work that uh, Vulkan has been doing, we now also have mobile, the MASVS, and here again, we have all the knowledge base items and the requirements in there. Now, the other thing is knowledge base. So for knowledge base, we have, like I mentioned, a lot of like in-depth explanations. So this one you can or search right in the application of SKF yourself and get more understanding. Or ideally, you could also deploy a chatbot of SKF and then ask, hey, what is a missing custom error page or what is what are error pages? then it would link the, the, the machine learning code, for example, to this knowledge base item, and then give like the description part. If you would ask, hey, how do I fix or solve error page uh, issues? Then it would give you the mitigation part. So again, very cool checklist, knowledge base items. Um, I mentioned before, we also have code examples. So we have many, uh, ASP.NET, um, Python, uh, <laughs> a lot of uh, uh, code examples over here that you can uh, look into, get feedback, see how certain things are uh, approached, right? So really on a detailed level, we show why we do it, comment and so on and so on. Um, good thing is everything in SKF, uh, what I'm showing comes as is, right? So if you download SKF, all the data, all the knowledge, all the good stuff is in there. But if you say, hmm, you know what, I have my own code snippets because I'm using, I don't know, this framework or this or that, you can just simply remove them and uh, inject your own code snippets there, right? Uh, the same for the knowledge base items, you can just extend them, add your own knowledge base items in it, and it's great. Well, the other thing was the labs, right? So here we have the labs, and like I mentioned before, here we can just uh, yeah, have a super huge list Shop and SKF labs that you can start directly from SKF. So how does this work? SKF is running in a Kubernetes cluster uh, and all the labs can be deployed in this Kubernetes cluster. So on the moment I click on action uh, start, it's now actually building and deploying a lab and making it available in the, the Kubernetes cluster. So we have this URL, we can go there and boom, here we have now a nice application that we can, uh, well, do some uh, hacking on, right? Uh, this is a very simple one, so maybe it's uh, uh, fun to do it very quickly. Let's see. So we have here uh, a piece of code, and what is this doing? It is actually having a pull down menu, and as you can see, the value is text slash intro.txt. So what if we do a direct local file inclusion in here. So we change it to slash ATSA password day. Yes, the first one, submit. And there you go. So very simple one, but uh, again, safe environment for you to, to play around and, uh, and hack. 
and um, don't get me wrong this was uh, the easy one uh, <laughs> we also have some very challenging uh, race conditions jwt uh formula injection and other good stuff and uh well don't forget there's also juice shop so you can also go full in with uh, the juice shop lab as well and uh and do all the stuff there then the last thing i wanted to show you is the manage projects so in here this is the the expert wizard what, what i was talking about where we can utilize the security requirements checklist like the mobile or the application security verification standard and we can use them to generate the right set of requirements for what we want to achieve so the idea would be simple you go there to your project we created a project and then we can select what are we building a web app a mobile or we use our custom checklist so we use it we say we're going to do web. Um, well, here is an explanation of the, the level. So I'm going to select level three because we're going to build a critical application. And here we have the different categories. So let's say I'm going to build a feature that is going to um, take user input. So I select the category validation. And now I get a couple of questions over here. So do you want like phone numbers and whatnot? I will say yes. I'm also getting something from the local file system. And let me see, I'm going also to use SQL. So this is the expert wizard. I select those questions. Um, I'm going to build uh, not an existing feature, but I'm going to build a new feature. I will call the feature full bar because full bar is awesome. So, and now what it will do if we say submit, SKF will correlate based on the questionnaires to the ASVS in this sense, in this case, and we'll select for us from the 300 requirements, only the requirements that are now applicable for the change and the feature we're going to build. So now you have this list of uh, requirements to take into consideration when you're going to build your project, right? So you not only have like functional requirements, but boom, now you also have your security requirements. And again, if some of the requirements doesn't make a lot of sense, you can always click, you know, you get a bit more information. You see that we're also referencing here to the cheat sheets for this uh, requirement, also to the CWE Mitre website. And in some cases, we also have like the code slash testing tab where the explanation would be, hey, this stuff you can maybe check using this tool. Um, this can be exported. You, if you are like an admin, you can also uh, mark those things and audit. You know, like, hey, I solved them, or hey, this is a false positive. Um, you can also import it into another awesome OWASP project called Defect uh, Dojo, right? The vulnerability management system. Great project as well. Definitely look at that one. Um, yeah, and really, uh, everybody, this is really a nutshell and a very quick uh, overview of what SKF can do. Um, I hope I, I at least gave you the right pointers, right? That you have an idea. Uh, the demo environment, you can always go there. Um, so you can skip login. You're a normal user. You can use all the features. You can deploy labs and you can go all in. Um, yeah. So that is uh, the small demo of SKF. Um, yeah, and also uh, the last couple of minutes, what I wanted to say with the um, Google Summer of Code, we have a, a, yeah, a great student working very heartily on this new release that we're going to do as well. So today, actually, with the help of Volcom, we're going to release the MASVS feature, questionnaire, knowledge base items, and all that good stuff in the new release of SKF. And in about between now and a month, we're also going to release this new feature that you're seeing over here. So remember that the lab that I showed you um, and where we can practice our security skills. So now in the upcoming release that we will do in between now and a month, the lab will all look like this and like a browser based editor where first you can, you know, follow the skills, uh, uh, follow uh, the, the, the path of exploitation and doing really the offensive part right of the lab. But now you can also train and, and uh, practice all the design patterns that you learned in the ASVS, MASVS, the SKF knowledge base items, code examples. You can practice them now here as well. So you can 
dynamically update here the application, the lab will be reflected with the updates that you have done. And then you can, again, verify if your implementation, your secure design patterns were correct or not, right? You also have a nice terminal here. So in the future, you can also run some dust, sust, uh, and other type of tooling. Um, again, to really help the developers from A to Z, trying and, and learning as much as possible over the whole cycle, right? Um, so we have a couple of uh, places where you can uh, find us. We have the Gither uh, channel. We have the OWASP channel where you can find us. And of course, the demo environment of SKF. Um, if you Google OWASP SKF, then you also find the uh, SKF uh, page in, in OWASP. There's also a bit more information like the, the GitHub where you can download it, what the credentials are, what the setup is, and all that good stuff. And what proofs. Ah, yes, indeed. And, uh, and walkthroughs, that is correct. For all of the labs, we actually also have walkthroughs. I uh, didn't show you that, but definitely check the demo, try it locally, play around with it. You uh, will probably see a lot more um, Yeah, that I couldn't explain in this uh, short time. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, thank you very much.